Sooner Scoop HD. All right, uh, good morning. Uh, good to see everyone. Uh, I'm going to uh, open it up for questions. Obviously, uh, we had a, a really strong win uh, against Oklahoma State, and uh, really proud of our team for and coaches for for being prepared. Um, loved how we started. Uh, loved the fight and the grit uh, that the defense, in particular, showed uh, to finish. Uh, we had too many lulls uh, in the game uh, offensively, uh, but we did enough in all three phases to uh, have tremendous game control and uh, with the game's never in doubt. And again, just love the improvement that I've seen with a bunch of players, different units, uh, creating turnovers, attack of the line of scrimmage. Uh, really uh, excited for the seniors to be able to uh, leave in their last game uh, at the Palace uh, with a win. Certainly against our rival, uh, adds a little more to it for obvious reasons. And, and we got a great challenge now, finishing out the regular season, going out to, to Texas Tech. Uh, much improved Texas Tech team, playing with a lot of confidence right now. And as we know, uh, you know, uh, Tech plays really well at home. And they've played well on the road, but they play really well uh, at home. So not an easy place to go out and play. They'll, they'll have the place packed out uh, for the Sooners. Uh, they'll do a tremendous job in the environment and the atmosphere. So, um, you know, my challenge to the team is, you know, hopefully they're not satisfied uh, with with uh, winning a sixth game. And we got a lot of football still in front of us, opportunity to uh, really um, continue to create some momentum for us going into uh, postseason play. And again, a great challenge. We're going to need to play well uh, this week. Okay, let's start with Eric Bailey. We're, we're in an era now where between the regular season game and the bowl game, we're seeing a lot of players opt out, a lot of roster movement, transfer portals. Have you discussed players that may be looking to opt out? Do you can think anyone will? And how do you, how will you handle that situation as a first-year coach? Again, I've been trying to create loyalty to um, the journey, loyalty to the brand, loyalty uh, to their teammates, uh, their brotherhood. That's a very real thing. Uh, you know, you're not going to just do it overnight. Um, we've had problems with that in the past, is in here at Oklahoma. Uh, I don't. I'm not a big fan of it uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, most first and foremost, it's being committed to something and finishing what you started. Uh, and, and at some point in time, that's got to mean something. Relationships, uh, you know, your opportunity, being thankful for your opportunity, and you 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 play your whole. Uh, career, any sport, and there's always a risk, you know, for injury, things of that nature. But uh, I think it, you know, just as a man, that's, uh, you know, you do what you say you're going to do, and no matter, no matter what. And so, uh, I'm not a big fan of of that. I know it's a popular thing uh, that's out there, uh, but there's plenty of places that you don't see it really happen uh, much at all and that's what I'm trying to create uh, here and so I didn't talk about specifically uh, uh, with any particular players um, but you know I've been working on that for the last 11 plus months uh, those things that I you know said uh, trying to again create a very connected place. And if you're connected, that'll be a much more difficult uh, decision. If it's a transactional uh, environment, I think it's a much easier uh, decision. So. Ryan Aver? Yeah, Brent, when you uh, are, are trying to maintain some momentum coming off uh, Saturday, does it make it easier at all, the way the last three quarters went, especially offensively, to <coughs> sort of have your messages uh, hit home a little bit with those guys about you know staying focused and yeah I think a sense of urgency maybe is what you're alluding to yeah, yeah absolutely We've got a bunch of guys that are really prideful uh, that have been incredibly uh, successful when all the moving parts are there together uh, like most uh, units they've they've done incredibly well all year and um, you know some of it is um, precision, some of it's timing, some of it's uh, uh, you know, play call, some of it's uh, how we handled it uh, as a staff, um, some of it's missed opportunity, you know, a bunch of different things. And uh, so 
you know, to me, you know, creating a sense of urgency um, is is definitely you know priority number one. And and I don't I think that's easy to cast. You know, that's that's you know I don't think everybody shares in a lack of urgency. You know, either. But it doesn't take much when you're not executing well. So uh, you know, that's fair to say that you know. That's a part that's again you got to have you know show up like your hair's on fire and you got something to prove you know you, in in some ways your back's against the wall you know I think that's you know as a competitor you know you you want to show that that's not reflective of really you know who we are and who we've been. And is that sense of urgency easier to cultivate at this point in the season too? I don't know if I don't know if it's. Ever easy, or if it's ever really hard. Again, I think that I think the players, um, if they're about the right stuff, will take on the uh, they'll take on the personality of their coaches to some degree. Yep. Come over here to Jesse. Grant, you've talked a lot about building that foundation of consistency. When it, when it comes to that defensive performance against OSU, especially when it comes to the younger guys that maybe got in and, and had an impact, where do you want to see them grow after a performance like that? Um, handle success. You know, stay every bit as hungry, not be satisfied, have that same sense of urgency. Uh, just be hungry and uh, focused and detailed. Uh, and continue to, you know, I don't take any of that for granted. I assume they'll come back and feel really good about themselves. But I didn't see that yesterday. A bunch of guys were in the facility on Sunday on their day off, you know, talking about wish they had, you know, more games on the schedule. Uh, uh, I believe that that's, you know, a desire of some of the guys, you know, that they really start to feel confident, comfortable, sure of themselves. Uh, I, you know, that's probably not the case for every single guy. But, you know, the right guys are, are really starting to uh, buy into how we do what we do, what it takes, and are willing to sacrifice, you know, for that commitment and having an opportunity to be successful. Sometimes you, you, you do it and, you, you know, you commit to a way of doing things, not a way of doing things if I get the result that I want. You have to be willing to commit to it, no matter what, you know. And whether you're successful or you're not, you go right back to it again. And so there's, again, that's the buy-in, that's the mindset, uh, the attitude, the work, and you're trying to create great habits uh, that lead to an opportunity to be successful and to improve. Um, so, you know, that's got to be the buy-in is is starting with the mindset and then the work that it takes. Uh, Brent, has defensive line production has been up and down throughout the course of the year. How has Miguel Chavis handled it in his first year as being the full-time guy? And what have you really liked about what Miguel's done throughout the course of the yeah, year? Yeah, he's very passionate. He's detailed. Um, cares deeply for his guys, um, both as human beings, uh, first and foremost, and as, as players. He knows that the players are a reflection of him. And so if we have fallen short, he's taken it personally, which he should, you know. He loves what he does. If you're going to have a chance to be uh, great at something, you got to love what you do. you got to be passionate about it and everything that, that it takes. Uh, and so he's all of those things. Uh, he knows that uh, when you're building something, there's, there's this, there, have to, there has to be a sense of urgency and a sense of patience, too. And, but uh, to get the, the buy-in that you want, it's, it's a relational piece. Uh, it's a motivating piece. It's, you know, you got to challenge your guys uh, on a daily basis. They got to work for a result every day. And so he's, I thought, I think he's done a, a terrific job in uh, where his guys are at today. A year from now, they'll be, again, in a whole nother, uh, you know, they'll take a huge step, you know, of, of from where they're at right now. I believe that. And, but, but I've been really pleased with uh, Miguel. And uh, he's the same guy every day. He shows up, you know, he's at 10. And uh, he's got great humility. And, and his guys love him for that. You know, he's very uh, open, honest, transparent, but he's tough and demanding. Eli? 
confess to you a lot about Braden Willis, but I'll take another stab. It's spending this year around him as one of the leaders on this team, watching him grow into that role. Is there anything that you personally have learned about this job, about this sport, about leadership, having him on this team with, with this particular year? Well, I think that he's, uh, like all great leaders, he's selfless, selfless, willing to sacrifice, great toughness. He's a model of consistency. Um, great humility. He loves the work, loves the grind, loves his teammates, and he's willing to say and do the uncomfortable and the things that are not popular. Uh, so it's for me, it's been just reinforcement. You know, there's great leaders everywhere, and you know I'm trying to create an environment that nurtures that, uh, that develops other uh, leaders, and trying to help him be effective. Uh, and you know, make the kind of impact that he wants. Sometimes those guys, we all need a little bit of, uh, you know, affirmation, and uh, so tried to um, propel him in that regard uh, with some, as much support, you know, not only from myself but from other players too. You know, sometimes when you're a young person and you're trying to lead and it isn't always taking root, you can get frustrated and grow weary. And so I've constantly uh, try to be an example for him first and foremost and then number two is to encourage and you know we meet uh, you know with the senior council uh, twice a week and you know that's a big part of that those you know small windows of opportunity to uh, show them teach them encourage them on how to be effective leaders and how to be an agent of change in the environment that they're in. And they control the environment with their attitude and their energy, <laughs> their mindset, uh, you know, uh, their work, all of those things. So I've just tried to help him and serve him however I can from a leadership standpoint, but just got great, great appreciation uh, for his journey, for his development. I know he wasn't a highly recruited guy, um, but man, he has over delivered, you know, throughout his career. Uh, nobody on our team has more uh, command and respect uh, than Braden, and he's willing to say the things that everyone needs to hear sometimes that a lot of guys won't say. And so uh, he, he's got a tremendous legacy here, uh, you know, because of his investment in this university. Do you have any update on Daniel Parker as things stand? I don't. James Hill? You know, Brad, you talked about this a little bit after the game that you didn't like the fact your defense had to play 102 plays, but when you look at how many your linebackers played, almost every one of those, and we talked about the reason why, but I'm curious how well you felt like they held up and how well did they play. I think Woody played close to 100 plays, too. Those guys that had to play those extended plays, how well do you feel like they did? I think they did terrific. Uh, graded out really well, uh, very productive. Um, didn't see a lot of uh, drop-off. Uh, you know, that's not ideal in the, the tempo of the game, the flow of the game, you know, and how we were playing, you know, on, on, on defense dictated that to a certain degree. Uh, not an easy thing to manage necessarily, but I thought those guys played really well. So they uh, played with great competitive strain, you know, for uh, the entirety of the game. Did you talk about the matchup you had with Tech's offense? No, but you know, a big part of that too is, and I know they played 100 and some plays, but right. they played very few drives for very long. So their their length of play on any particular series was pretty short. You know, eight three and outs, four turnovers, and four turnovers on downs. Uh, so you're not at, when you were out there, you're out there a lot, but not out there long periods of time. Sometimes, you know, you're out there for a 12, 13, 14 play drive. That that can take its toll and it's harder to recover uh, within the game, you know, from uh, situations like that. Did you talk about your defensive matchup against Tech's offense in the game? Yeah, obviously, um, number one, Tech's played really well at home, uh, averaging close to 40 points a game at home, uh, whether they beat you know, Texas or, you know, played great games against uh, TCU and uh, Oklahoma State, uh, two of the better, you know, teams in the conference as well. Uh, they're playing with a lot of confidence. Uh, Tyler Shuck is a guy that, he's a big guy, got a great arm.
transfer from Oregon, got really good receivers, good backs. Uh, you know, defensively, they play with a lot of confidence. They're going to get up in your grits and challenge you. Uh, they're going to attack you. They're going to put pressure on you, five and six man pressures and man to man, and then they'll, they'll drop eight as well. Uh, great, great matchup, you know, for, for both sides of the ball. You know, Texas Tech, philosophically, uh, they go uh, really fast. I think they lead the FBS and in, in, uh, plays a game. And I think they've had five games over 100 plays. So you're going to have to defend a bunch of plays. They do a great, great job, very efficient, at both running and throwing, got great systems. They got a really good staff. Got a lot of respect for Joey McGuire. Recruited his schools at, when he was at Cedar Hill as a high school coach, and he's a good friend. I'm somebody I've stayed in touch with uh, throughout the years, and got a lot of guys on staff I'm very familiar with. Very, very uh, good staff. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the right side and work the way down the line, Jenny. Hey, Brent, um, bringing Matt Wells onto your staff, um, can you kind of rewind on how that transpired and what he's brought to the extended support staff you have? Yeah, he's obviously had has extensive um, experience as a head coach. Certainly, as you know, being from Oklahoma, understands our program. Uh, has recruited this state, you know, his entire career. And his brother Luke obviously was on our, our team uh, as well as a quarterback uh, years ago in the, in the late '90s, early 2000s. So, I've known Matt uh, and his brother Luke for since I, I came to Oklahoma in 1999. Yeah, great people, really sharp, strong football mind. Uh, we've stayed in touch, you know, throughout the years. Uh, when he was let go, um, reached out, stayed in touch, and then uh, at some point in time after I was here in January or so, uh, he reached out and we talked through some things and what a potential role uh, might be and what that might look like and how I could uh, – you know, how we could use his experience and his wisdom. And, you know, he came in with great humility, uh, you know, depth of, of knowledge of the conference. And, hey, here's, here's kind of who everybody is. Uh, there's just a lot, you know, that he brings from an experience standpoint that, uh, you know, we can always tap into, you know, those things. So uh, he's been a, you know, a really good addition. He's done a great job uh, in that support role. Uh, for both our offensive staff, and you know, he basically oversees the all the support staff guys in the offensive room. And then, you know, we like we do with all the offense and defensive support staffs, we we have them do. They they they've got a lot of stuff they got to do uh, every day that helps us prepare for uh, today and always be you know maybe a week ahead from an efficiency standpoint. So he's done a terrific job. I know it's been hard on him because he's uh, got daughters in high school and in college that aren't here with him. So we try to help him as much as we can to, so that he can try to do both. But it's not an easy thing to do. Thank you, Justin. You're right. You've talked a lot in the past about you know when you're bringing in a transfer or recruit, obviously they have to play to a certain level, but also fit the culture as well. With C.J. Colden, I mean, what was it about him when your first conversations with him that made you feel like he was going to be the right fit for this team? Yeah, just had a lot of energy, very humble, uh, articulate. I mean, he was very thankful for the opportunity he had where he was. Uh, was a good player for them. And um, so he had nothing but great things to say about the environment that he was in every day. Uh, so I like that as opposed to saying, man, I got to get out of here. Uh, this place stinks, whatever. You know, just so that was important in our initial conversation. And um, never asked for anything. He didn't want uh, me to explain to him, you know, you know how quickly he become become the starter, things like that. So he just, uh, he was thankful to have an opportunity to come. And everybody that I had spoken to spoke very highly of him from the standpoint of work ethic and competitiveness, uh, great teammate, things of that nature. So those are some of our initial conversations and first impression. And it was really, uh, we, we liked what we saw on tape. Uh, we knew we were thin, you know, in the secondary. And, uh, you know, the biggest 
disappointment that was that we couldn't, you know, we were working through some things, uh, you know, from a transfer standpoint. And uh, when we found out he couldn't be here for spring ball, that was obviously disappointing. Still would have taken him anyway, um, but it put him a little bit behind, uh, you know, some of the other guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how do you how do you balance that, Brent? You've talked about you value loyalty, and you know you want you're trying to instill loyalty. Yeah. You want guys that are here and committed to be here. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, the same things happen in other places, I assume, and they don't want to lose their guys either. Uh, how do you balance that? Wanting your guys? Yeah, to stay, I'm, but I'm really yeah. I'm really talking about. I'm talking uh, the loyalty is is these guys that are uh, near the, they're they're at the end of their career and. And so there's something that's next. I'm not talking about guys that are picking up, leaving, going to another school. Uh, you know, that's going to happen. You know, guys are unhappy with their opportunity. Uh, you know, there's a maturation. Sometimes it's a it's a mutual thing. You know, uh, guys aren't invested. They show up every day. They they they're uh, they're doing the bare minimum. Uh, they're looking for holes in the fence or a corner to cut. Uh, uh, bring no value. Uh, to the environment and have no appreciation for their opportunity. Sometimes, you know, it's good to have a mutual agreement. I'm not talking about that. Now, I am trying to help guys grow up. Sometimes it's because a guy's immature in how he thinks. And so everybody's the litmus test and, and it's different for everybody. But I'm really talking about uh, guys, for example, that are aspiring to, to go to the NFL, whether that's early uh, or um, that they're they're finishing, you know, their collegiate eligibility to finish what you started. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about loyalty, the brotherhood. Uh, finish what you started. Um, just for me personally, I could, I would, I could never. I don't, I don't understand how you can, um, you know, you know, I, I don't understand how you can do that, you know. Uh, unless you ha unless you're again a guy that uh, and I don't know I, I, I've seen it so uh, the opposite way you know somebody that you know a top 10 pick or uh, something like that that for whatever reason that's the best you know in his best interest not to not to participate and finish uh, you know the season so um, you know, it's easy for me to sit up here and say but I, I just want to create you know an environment and again I've had uh, you know, 30 years of, of loyalty, you know, to, to my job. I took this job. I didn't play, I didn't coach in a bowl game, uh, but this is the one head coaching job I took. And, you know, uh, I felt like I needed to do that for the betterment of the team so I could, you know, I'm leading 120 guys and, uh, you know, 50 plus people from a staff standpoint. There's a lot of work to be done uh, that I couldn't do both, uh, you know, getting ready to play in the NFL, uh, the best thing you can do is keep playing and gaining experience and improving and showing your worth and your uh, your value by how you play. That's how you get drafted. Uh, for me as a head coach, the best thing I could do was was um, step away, not be a distraction, and do the best job I could, you know, connecting with the players, hiring the staff, developing programs, things of that nature. I'm just thinking both sides of the of the coin. In, uh, making sure I defend myself, I guess. Because uh, it's, like I said, it can sound self-serving. Self but I've, I've lived a, a career of that from a coach standpoint, and I was a player. And, so, and I get it, uh, you, know, what, you know, what it means to be committed to something. Darren? Brent, you've alluded a few times in the course of the season about how you'll have experiences this year which will, which will make you better down the road as a head coach, mm -hmm. head coach for the first time. I'm wondering in reference to the game Saturday night if clock management, game management is something that you'll, is, is one of those things that you'll. Yeah, we, again, we, we ran the ball 16 of our last 18, you know, snaps. We, we, we should have huddled, you know, the whole fourth quarter. But we're also trying to, you know, Oklahoma State did not come in here this having this impenetrable defense. They were uh, a defense that had not played consistently well, and we thought there was a lot of opportunity. What we didn't do philosophically was stay aggressive in in what we were doing, uh, like we did the first quarter, and and so yeah, learned learned uh, you know uh, we got to stay more aggressive. Uh, 
particularly in the third quarter, and and again in the fourth quarter, uh, needed to huddle and and take our time and run the clock down. Uh, even though we were running the ball, uh, you know we're, you know things happen that we weren't on the field long enough to you know manage the game better. Is that an instance just as a quick follow up where you get on the, on the on the set and say, hey Jeff, let's let's do that, let's make sure we're being mindful of the play clock, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, where you step in, and mm -hmm. yeah, play your role essentially. No doubt. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Back left, John Hoover. Yeah. Hey, Brent. Um, big, big, big recruiting weekend for you guys last weekend. Uh, I wonder if you could kind of go into some details without any names or any kind of things like that. Just details on how interesting it is or compelling it is for you to manage you and your staff to manage that many guys what their feedback was what kind of did they tell you they had a great time all that kind of stuff just kind of pull back the curtain and let us know what the, yeah how well, it went. you've already started uh, getting benefits from it apparently we have and obviously that was you know what you hoped and intended uh, you got a thing that helps all that is you know having a great experience uh, from the moment they get here, uh, whether that's uh, an official visit or an unofficial visit, we've got a, a really good, strong uh, staff, and that's full-time people, that's our recruiting staff, that's all the support staff, uh, student workers, you know, bringing everybody together. I th thought that uh, Lee Davis and J.R. Sandlin did a terrific job, and then uh, everybody that I just named. Uh, it, putting all hands on deck. There's a lot of coordination that takes place, a lot of uh, details uh, that you, and it's, it's always changing, lots of communication from the moment, uh, you know, the first visitor arrives. And so you want it to be a wonderful experience, even if it's somebody that you're not necessarily high on your list uh, yet or uh, ever going to be. If, if they're, we're bringing them on our campus, we have a responsibility to make sure that we, you know, expose them to all the good things about that make Oklahoma um, a, a special place. And so having a great experience is, is, is our responsibility. Make sure that everyone does. So, we, you know, I, th I think everybody did a great job uh, of doing exactly that. But they start rolling in here, you know, on Thursday. And it's, again, not an easy thing. And then they're here a good part of on Sunday. And as I told a lot of the full-time staff, you know, that's great. But we have a, you know, obligations that we have to do. And you only have so much time during the course of the week. There's a, a schedule that we got to stay on from a preparation standpoint, closing the books on the last game, uh, film study, notes. Our players are coming in here expecting us to be 100% ready. And so managing that is also not an easy thing and because uh, you want to again to give people their proper send off and things of that nature finish uh you know the visits uh, the right way so everything from coming to the team hotel with the with the guys with the you know with the players and seeing what what that looks like uh at you know friday nights uh, uh, meetings and dinner and uh movies uh post uh, movie meetings as well and then uh, Saturday morning what that looks like as well game day game day meetings uh, you know there's a lot that goes into it it's not just you know guys go to a room and there's mean there's there's philosophy that you know it's uh, the um, sports performance side of it that you know you always want to help you know lead guys and encourage them the right way so they're exposed to a lot of things and then getting over to campus and what that's like uh, making sure that they get exposed to you know a game day environment and uh, and we're always trying to work as a as a staff too we we got a, a, a staff that's very experienced have been a lot of really great places in college football and so we're always looking at how can we make things better all right this is good how can we make it better so if that's what it looks like to tailgate um you know we're, we're working hard um really you know for the people because i think that's you know you want a, a connected environment and uh you know so uh meetings with me on game day you know i don't have so much time i get here two hours and 15 minutes before the game and so but you want some one-on-one -on -one meetings with guys that are committed with guys that you've offered uh, in the current class and the next class you know you so you have to prioritize 
uh, and you know, I try to prioritize to the guys that are committed first and foremost. Uh, you go on the field, there's guys coming out to, to say hello on the field, and uh, you're always conscious of not trying to hurt anyone's feelings. Somebody's going to always have their feelings hurt, but uh, but once we leave the meetings, um, you know, I'm running the defensive meeting, uh, Jeff's running the offensive meeting, and then the rest of the full-time staff, uh, while we're with the players at the hotel all day, they're back here uh, working uh, uh, relentlessly. And so that's with lunches and tours and just like Dalen Smothers, or I'm sorry, I can't say his name, can I? We had a recruit uh, that mu his mother had never been here. And so um, from out of state, and so we had to make sure she got, you know, what would be uh, almost like an official visit, you know, while she was here. Um, the things that you're allowed to do on an unofficial visit, make sure that she had a great peace of, of mind. She had a great experience. And so there's, you know, several instances like that. So all the while, there's other recruits that aren't here that you're trying to stay in touch with, you know, throughout the course of the day. Uh, maybe it's congratulating them on a, on a great win or uh, you're sending them words of encouragement. Their, their senior year is over now. Uh, so we do a great job. Uh, there's part of our staff that's always giving you the up-to-dates, what's going on with the other recruits, guys that are still playing and competing. Uh, or where they're at recruiting-wise. And so there's tons of communication, lots of information that runs through, uh, you know, across your desk, if you will, uh, nonstop. You got early morning, Sunday morning breakfasts at, at my house. Uh, you know, you got meetings back here. You know, you're trying to manage all that around, a, you know, your normal Sunday. Sunday, Monday are probably your two most difficult, challenging days as, as a coach from a preparation standpoint. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you got to manage all that, you know, together. Thanks. Yeah. Back row, Kerry Murdoch. I'll throw another landmine at you then. Um, you, I mean, NCAA has allowed universities to kind of uh, coaches, athletic directors to, to tell fans it's okay to give to collectives and, and direct them that way. From where it started to kind of where it is now, and how much you've been able to get updates on that, are, are you pretty pleased that? kind of that's the starting to kind of develop a little bit of a groundswell in, in Norman? Yeah, absolutely. I think most recently, I think there's uh, all hands on deck. Uh, I think our leadership has been strong and um, more like everyone else, trying to navigate it. And uh, there's a constant feed of, of uh, information. Uh, some of it's accurate, some of it's not. And you're trying to manage all of that, understanding that how how long term is this uh and so do we want to uh wait and try to figure it out or are we going to be aggressive and and be and be able to make a hard left or hard right hand turn when we need to and so i've been really pleased with uh leadership here at the university uh and and again the support you know with the right people you know on the outside i don't spend a lot of time on it and i get the information uh you know I've shared philosophically how I feel about you know this space. I um, think it's a uh, there can be plenty of good things. Um, my only concern is that we don't lose sight of the true value of what going to college uh, is all about, and using the stage and the platform the right way to uh, educate, uh, to be informative, to uh, promote and help these guys. Uh, you know, with their platforms and chase all of their dreams, facilitate all of their dreams. That's a great thing. But don't lose sight of the value of, uh, you know, an education, getting your degree, holistic development, becoming a man, developing uh, and taking all the transferable skills that the game of football, managing um, their day-to-day uh, -day lives, you know, how that can impact them for the rest of their life as husbands and as fathers, as leaders, uh, as businessmen. It's a very real thing. That's a very practical thing. Uh, but keeping the main thing, the main thing is what that is all about, not uh, prostituting, you know, these kids. And, uh, or, and again, you're just trying to be a, 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 a vessel of information and education uh, because not everybody sees it the same way. Uh, I think a lot of people do. I think, I think families that, uh, you know, 
have the right. There, there's nothing wrong with a family saying, yeah, we'd like you, you know, Johnny to have a, you know, to maximize this, this small window, but not at the expense of um, learning the value of work ethic and being a great teammate and, and uh, having some stick to itness and learning about the ability to persevere and overcome, uh, figure things out, fight and compete. Uh, fall on your face and learn how to drag yourself up off the mat and go back to work and start swinging. Like the real value of education, like getting your degree, that moment of walking across the stage and getting a degree to be a, a, a football coach, you know, to be a teacher uh, and so many other professions, you got to have a degree as a, as a bare minimum. Uh, you're constantly, you know, acquiring life skills if you're in the right environment. Environments matter people matter people are contagious and so for us we want trying to con create a very connected um, home uh, for these guys they're going to go through all the uh, moments of success and a whole lot of failure and lots of moments of anxiousness and anxiety our job is to uh, meet them where they're at and be uh, uh, seeds of encouragement uh, seeds of truth uh, seeds of accountability uh, and, and be, again, the lamp at their feet to help them manage uh, the next several years, but most importantly, to be able to have an impact strong enough and influence uh, the window that we have to influence to help prepare them for real life, you know, and how to respond. And you don't, uh, you're not entitled to anything. You're entitled to, to you get what you earn. And, and what's so wrong with that? And so, to me, that trumps everything, but I think um, it would we'd be negligent and uh, behind the times, if you will, if, if we don't provide these young people an opportunity to take advantage of their name, image, and likeness. I think it's a great thing. Uh, but keep it in the right perspective. And, and again, so there's certain parts that teaches them, here, here's, here's how the market works. You know, if you use your platform the right way, you know, you're a source of ins inspiration. Uh, you give people hope. You know, you have a sense of humility to you. Everybody loves humility. Uh, you're about the work. You know, they see you strain out there. You get to play in front of millions of people each and every uh, week, and Oklahoma's going to be on TV, and everybody's tuning into Oklahoma, whether you're hoping they lose or you're pulling for them to win. And you have this amazing window, this opportunity to, um, to, to write your resume. You know, to tell the story, to control what they write. They're going to they're gonna write based on what they see you do. And so I think this, you know, to teach this, again, I, I go back to the education piece. Lots of opportunity to educate. You know, maybe that's financial literacy, like literal education. Uh, but the life skills, the transferable skills, um, that while they're here is a big part of, to me, that is also NIL. That's our responsibility, not to lose sight of, uh, of that. And the environment doesn't necessarily mesh with that, okay? Um, in some ways, it's contradictory. And, and so for us, we're trying to, you know, blend it all together. I think that's important, uh, that we, we do everything we can to fight and compete for our players and to help them uh, in, that, in that market. And then, uh, you know, you, what you'll find out is some guys are just too lazy. They don't want to do any extra work. You know, they're fine with what they got. But I think it's a great thing put some money in their pocket, give them an opportunity to, you know, expand their brand if that's something that they're they're looking to do. Um, there's there's definitely opportunity to do that. Uh, when you co-brand with uh, Jordan and the University of Oklahoma and the, the excellence that it represents. And um, and then again, as much as anything else to, to get the, you know, the quality education, uh, and the experience that that gives you, you know, for the next several years. Mm -hmm. Over here, uh, Jordy Helmer. Yeah, you talked <clears throat> excuse me, earlier about the loyalty to the program. Uh, just how key have some of your super seniors, Deshaun White, Justin Broyles, Braden, you talked about earlier, been to setting those things foundation-wise for you guys? You know, I think they're great examples of, of what you want it to look like. They're all playing their best football, too, and it's amazing how that works. But if you stay committed, you know, this is a developmental game. The more you play, the better you, you get. Uh, the law of the bamboo. It may not happen those first few years, but you just keep uh, plugging away and um, cultivating, and next thing you know, they poof, man, come out of nowhere and uh, have this monstrous uh, last you know year or so of their career. 
Uh, and so, but those guys, from a leadership standpoint, examples of people that you can point to, of the success that they're having uh, in the moment and, and enjoying it, even though, uh, believe it or not, you know, uh, we're, you know, we just won our sixth game, all right, so we, we're not having this amazing season from a, a win loss uh, perspective. But they're having the time of their life. And Deshaun will tell you that he's never been closer to a group of people. Uh, and he's loving the journey. And he feels like he's working harder than he ever has. And so I think that's a great thing. That's a great testimony. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'll, you guys can interview and ask those questions to the other guys. I think you, you, would, you would hear the same thing from s several other guys. Any more questions for Coach? Yeah, we'll have them. Great, the, uh, you played really good defense three of the last four weeks and whatever you think about the Baylor game. But compared to earlier in the year, that improvement, what does that do for you? Not just tech and the bowl game. What does that do for you and and program going forward and trying to build the defensive presence that you want to build? Well, it lends credibility uh, with our players, first and foremost, of what it takes. And as I've said many times, I can't change what it takes. And it never happens as fast as you want. And so the, even that part of it, you know, the endurance that you got to have, it's not just going to happen right away. Uh, but that's, those, that's the number one thing, is lending credibility. Uh, certainly continue to attract. It always helps in the recruiting world. That's, you know, we're in a competitive business. And so you want to you wanna have, uh, you want to be able to sell hope, you know, in You've you got this vision, but vision vision with no results is not an easy thing to sell, uh, especially in the here and the now. Uh, fortunately for us, we've got depth and depth and depth of of um, really good, successful experience to continue to uh, to sell. But you know, it's it's better, you know, if you can say, hey, man, we're you know top ten in the country and interceptions or pass efficiency defense or leading the country in power five schools for tackles for loss or three of our linebackers are top 12 in the conference in tackles number one number four and 11 or 12 um offensively you know leading the conference in rushing uh eric gray one of the best in the country you know all kinds of good things dylan gabriel uh, i think he's one or two i think he's is he two i think he's number two in the conference in uh, efficiency, uh, quarterback efficiency. So, or Marvin Mims being one of the best receivers in the conference with his success. I know you're talking about defense in particular, but I'm just thinking about all the different areas uh, that goes along with that. Uh, but that's the biggest thing is, is you know, it helps obviously with our, our current players and, and what we're asking them to do, what it takes, the depth of the, the knowledge, the experience, the studying. Uh, the understanding of everybody around them that will help for the returning players certainly and then these guys have been a great voice the guys that won't be here have been a great example of the work uh, that it takes as well so um, you know that's what I think you know playing a little better uh, can do for you that the OSU game, they had so many opportunities to kind of crack back open the door, and the defense continued to slam it shut. Like, probably not since Nebraska have we seen that happen. Was there, when those guys came back to the sideline, was there a demeanor? Was there a communication maybe that made you feel like, okay, these guys are starting to get this a little bit? Yeah, hungry and tough, uh, responsive, uh, accountable, self awareness, good body language. Uh, you know, there's always really stressful moments, and so how you handle all of that. Uh, I'm I'm always when I get in there, I'm going to try to be practical, uh, strategic, um, but also um, creating a lot of stress that it takes, um, the sense of urgency uh, that it takes um, to continue to play at a high level and, and making sure that nobody is over there, uh, you know, feeling too good about themselves. Uh, or again, always finding the things that sometimes you're successful, but you weren't great. Uh, 
on that play. You know, alignment, um, assignment, things like that. And so you want to get that corrected immediately. And so sometimes that's that's a harder thing for young people that aren't experienced to grab a hold of. What do you mean? We just we that was another. I made the sack or whatever. Yeah, but you weren't supposed to blitz. Your guy was actually wide open. Uh, you made the play, but like that, I don't know if that exact thing happened, but something like that happens virtually every week. And your job as a coach is to find those things and, and get it corrected. Sooner Scoop HD.